My name is Bradley. I have a Brad taste in music, and I also have no way of fixing this incredible lighting. Oh wait, yes I do. Here we go. I discovered Peggy's music from the same source that most of my first generation crackers uh, discovered it from, and that's Anthony Fantano's review of his breakthrough album, Veteran. Actually, no, scratch that. Uh, see, actually, I discovered him from Anthony Fantano praising his song, I Might Vote for Donald Trump, about a year beforehand. So, uh, actually, I was actually one of the few original fans, you know. I mean, I was rocking with, uh, with Peggy from the bottom, you know. I'm a, I'm a real fan. So, anytime you want to hit me up, Mr. Almond Mountain Jesus, you know, I'm, I'm here. You want a feature, you want to have a chat, let's set up an interview, because I'm a real fan. All right, A1, day one, all right, I was there, okay, before the fans, kind of. So, anyways, that first song that I heard on my vote for Donald Trump was an incredible track. And the reason it was so great is because it was fun and exciting and a really clever way of comparing voting for Donald Trump at the time as this form of proving that you're hard, that, that you're a threat, that you're someone to be afraid of. And the way that this whole track kind of tied around that was very clever, very funny, and the, and the song just went really hard. Alright, so Veteran was released, and uh, this was like a spotlight that was rising for Peggy, because uh, over time, it built up a large audience for him, which showed, because the album itself was a good album. But actually, it's it's more than just a good album, it's kind of a breath of fresh air. Because uh, I, I, I specifically re remember when this album was released, uh, in the beginning of last year, it was a slow week. Nothing nothing was nothing else was good during the week. It was you know, nothing else was interesting. I saw Anthony Fantano reviewed something uh involving experimental music, okay, and I said, you know what? Oh, I recognize this name, you know. I'm not one of those uh second gen dick riding clowns, you know, trying to get an autograph, alright? I know that name, alright? I was a homie, A one day one, you know? So I was like, alright, I'll check this album out true story. Alright, so Veteran was loud, it was raw, it was unchained, and instantaneous at first listen. It was bold, it, it was brash, it was abrasive, it was heavy, it was definitely very quick to stick in my head. I did a full review of Veteran, and if I remember correctly, it was a pretty accurate review, uh, but then again, you know, it was a year ago. However, with this album being released, it put uh, Veteran in a whole new light, in a whole new kind of comparison, in terms of the Peggy, you know, uh, general lore, I guess, for his music, which of course I studied extensively because I'm a Gen 1 fan. A1 Day 1, you know, hey Peggy, if you got a concert around me, you know, just hit me up with those backstage tickets, you know. We could, we could, you know, play some backgammon or something, alright? Hang out like pals. However, as a true fan of Peggy, I gotta say, uh, when, when I got through this new album, All My Heroes Are Cornballs for the first time, I was disappointed. No, like, like actually disappointed, not like meme disappointed, like, like, uh, you'll be disappointed, like, like, uh, like Peggy was tweeting about over and over and over again. And like he said, when he released the album on Twitter, you'll be disappointed. And like Kenny Beats said, and like James Blake said, you know, in those videos. No, I mean, it, it was actually disappointing. Like, surprisingly, I, I wasn't expecting to be as disappointed as I actually was. Like, wow, he, he wasn't kidding. Especially since the singles he released were actually really good. From knowing what I knew about Veteran, I was expecting a lot of different types of tracks, a lot of different scattered ideas, much like Veteran. And maybe that was my issue going into this album, is that I really just wanted something like I got with Veteran. And maybe I was not expecting so many, you know, spots of Horrible auto-tune all over the place, abused to death on this album. It felt like there was no risks, except for the risks that were taken were awful risks. Like with, like I said, the, the auto-tune! Peggy, he said this album is his most him and free on Instagram. He explained how much it meant to him and how this was his unchained, fully expressive and not holding himself back type of album. And after hearing that, you know, I was like, alright. Veteran had a lot of things under the hood. Maybe this album will follow that same sort of idea where there's just a lot of Easter eggs. There's a lot to explore. So even if I gave it a deep analysis and I didn't really find anything that it, I didn't find in the first listen, at least maybe there'll be some, you know, creative little spots that I didn't find. And wow. Wow. Uh, there's actually a lot happening here. Like, this album is a weird kind of experience that I see as JPEG Mafia's one woman thought internet ex exploration, and the fact that all this stupid nonsense, uh, I guess, makes sense to me now, I don't know. 
Something about it feels like I'm crazy, but another part, I, I feel bad that I judged it at such a surface level. Because the actual enjoyment that I got by the end of this album, when I really dive deep into it, is just way more than what I was expecting. And a lot of that came down to just some of these ideas that were just executed so, uh, I guess, man, like, like I've never heard anyone else do. I guess I could start by explaining, but there's... A couple basic themes about All My Heroes are cornballs, lyrically, uh, and JPEG Mafia, for one of them, is comparing himself consistently to a thought on this album. And not just on the song, uh, Jesus Forgive Me, I'm a Thought, but actually uh, throughout pretty much the entire album. But what does this thought comparison mean? At first, you know, you can take a look and see that there's a literal interpretation here. Apparently there were some accusations against Peggy that he was cheating in a relationship and that he was flying some people out, and he does uh, address this point, it looks like, in a couple of spots on this album. But the other image that I think it's more likely is, is the fact that he's a thought, I guess, to the fame that he's suddenly been accustomed to, which is a theme that is brought up a lot throughout this album, is him addressing fame, addressing this new sort of, I guess, reality that he's put himself into. It could have him feeling like a thought to his audience, literally obscuring his process of making music, performing, or just another layer that I don't see immediately. That being said though, it's actually really hard not to take this whole thought imagery uh, literally, especially with the album cover over here having JPEG Mafia dressed in this puffy dress, which believe it or not, he mentions a surprising amount of times on this album. Like the first track where he says that he's dressed in your grandmama's hand-me-downs, which feels like a playground insult uh, that has absolutely no meaning or punch when he says it, uh, which in a lot of ways kind of brings up this whole thought, you know, degrading yourself for attention, or like it almost adds on this whole disappointment angle that Peggy's going for himself, and it feels like he's shaming and degrading himself in a fame kind of way with these bars. The thought theme is very important for this entire album, and it really comes up in a very interesting way through different, uh, I guess, layers of this thing. <laughs> now that annoying auto-tune that's played in multiple parts throughout this album, that's, uh, that's Peggy being a thought. Okay, okay, let me, let me take that back. Alright, sorry. Uh, it's, it's, uh, him portraying himself as a confused female figure. Every time he goes into this voice, it feels like he's representing himself in this way. Asking usually a question whether or not he's knowing what he wants for himself, or, or what to do with himself. And I might be looking too much into this. This album's comedic. And it doesn't take itself really seriously at all. But I do find myself enjoying it the most when I'm dissecting these really complex themes that Peggy says he's speaking in tongues through. Uh, so when JPEG Mafia isn't singing poorly. He's rapping over these obscure, loud, and very watery instrumentals that uh, never really seem to feel like they start or end. What is he rapping about? Guns. 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 The internet. Uh, shooting people on the internet with guns. 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 Showing up to people's houses because they're talking shit on Twitter. Saying that they won't say it in real life because he's got guns. guns. He raps about people being fake gangsta. He raps about fame, and, and, and most of all, he raps about guns. So many guns. And it's really important, actually, the, the fact that how many times he beats the listener over the head with this idea of guns, because it builds this ridiculous character for Peggy that comes back in a way that I really could never have expected it to, because he twists this image in such a clever way. One of my favorite moments on this album being the song Thought Tactics. And this, this moment was super important because it takes this well-established theme of him being a thought, and then it takes this well-established theme of guns, and then it just like meets in the middle. <laughs> and, and this song, where it takes these two exaggerated sides and these two bizarre images, and it, and it shows Peggy catfishing someone online so that he could... <laughs> pretending to be a girl so that he could show up to the house eventually and shoot them like like the, 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 the how, how far he's willing to go with this it shows no bounds he's saying he wants to rock the world and as soon as he lets them in he just fucking pulls out the mac oh it's one of those moments in the songs where you just like the setup of the f whole first half of the album leading to this point just is just like a jaw-dropping moment and it also has this great tie-in with the internet which has just been a big JPEG Mafia staple but that's only one example here of this bizarre yet perfectly orchestrated cohesive moment uh, there's multiple on this album and it just kind of flies by with a casual listen and I think the biggest example here and, and just the biggest 
screw it kind of moment here was basic bitch tear gas. And the name by itself, you know, it made me curious. I want to check out the song uh, being a minute in length. And yeah, it's, uh, <laughs> it's just the cover of the song Scrubs by TLC. And I think the worst part about looking at this song from, from I guess, a context standpoint is just <laughs> as crazy as it sounds, this moment is where Thought Peggy is developing this new side of self-respect. This moment on the album is the conclusion to the whole Peggy Thought thing the, the, that just keeps showing up. It's just, it all ends with him singing Scrubs. Her singing Scrubs. That is the sign of self-respect that Peggy has gained. And it is one of those moments where, where oh man, just, just that clicking, I'm like, geez, this, it, it feels like something straight out of a South Park episode, like the, the way that this thing is solved. There's something about it that's just so creative and so obscure and so, like, who else would do that shit, you know? But what also amazes me about this moment was the song that was right before it, Post Verified Lifestyle, which is a complete juxtaposition uh, at the whole thought angle as it addresses this whole gun side. While the whole thought thing ends, uh, this song, at first I didn't really understand with the going through these two, two parts, but as it really hit the middle side of this song and it started to flip and then you, uh, you heard the conversation and the beat change, we just got through one hardcore verse about Peggy talking about gun guns in a very uh, animalistic, hardcore kind of style. And then all of a sudden we get this change, this conversation between these two people going back and forth, I guess uh, him discussing why he talks about guns. And then he continuously, another verse about guns afterwards. And I realized, I was like, wait a minute, post-verified lifestyle, this is a before and after. The first verse is before verified, which is literal verified like on Twitter, post-verified is afterwards. And I think the best thing about this is on both sides, he's talking about guns and violence. And this is his way of saying nothing changed. <laughs> and almost like the whole song in itself is just this pointless way of representing that. And it is such a punchy, beautiful moment on this album that just puts a smile on my face. It's just like, I mean, such a stupid concept with just such an incredible execution here. The song JPEG Mafia type beat is a parody of trends, I guess, of finding beats online uh, under like a, an artist name, like a uh, outcast style beat, you know, like the uh, DJ Khaled used on his album. The song itself, actually, the beat is pretty hard hitting uh, and eventually ends up uh, melting in this song Gr uh, Grimy Waifu, which in any other context honestly would be just pointless trash. I think this song sounds awful. And the fact that this song is obviously having uh, this sort of split personality and it knows how trash it sounds and it knows it's talking about basically nothing. And the fact that it is over the outro of JPEG Mafia type beat leads me to believe that this is JPEG Mafia's alter ego rapping over a JPEG Mafia type beat. This song is just so fucking meta if, if that's what it meant to be because that is just such a albumception type of thing to do that just took me out of my, my I was like, yo, what the hell is going on? Oh my God, it does. It really feels that way because nothing on this track is happening. And it's, it's leading off this outro and it just builds into a song of its own. And man, it really feels like that. And it's just so, it's, again, it's just a stupid idea that's just so well executed that it just, it makes me smile. It's, it just made me feel like this crazy joy of like, wow, what the hell? <laughs> Who would have the idea of doing this shit? Rap Grow Old and Die X No Child Left Behind is pretty much an even deeper dive into this crazy rabbit hole that started with Grimy Waifu as it feels like all of a sudden this song is just absolute fuck it abstract view and it's one of the most obscure songs on here and at points it comes close to i mean there was like a point where it's like drone rap the auto tune on here sounds like a uh, young thug malfunctioning it's just an obscure track then we get to the title track all my heroes are cornballs and something about this song in general sort of feels like he's parroting himself and made even more obvious by the stupid samples of someone ordering a meal at a drive-thru and then talking about why they love JPEGs. It's almost so run-of-the-mill, easy, simple numbers that it really feels intentional to drive this point about being a cornball. The singing here also is actually very entertaining. The song is showing that he was also inspired by his cornball heroes 
uh, I guess, to be a cornball as well. It's a really fun cut, doesn't take itself too seriously, with a great beat that has a great hard switch up at the end. Quickly talking about the second single that was released for this album, uh, Beta Male Strategies, which, you know, I can relate to uh, in a bit more depth. It's a song with a beautiful sample that got stuck in my head for about a day. I also love how this song starts off where it feels like he's being approached while he's eating a meal. And again, it's one of those ideas where I'm just like, what the hell? But it works so well aesthetically for how it sets up this song to where it almost feels like when he starts actually getting into his raps, it just, again, it has that raw feeling. Prone. More hype gun talk, the sequel. The sequel sequel. It has a lot of hard hitting bars. It feels like something only Peggy would have the head to think of, honestly. We then get to the song Free the Frail featuring Helena DeLand, hopefully I'm pronouncing that right, and yeah, that's a, that's a feature. And the song is about Peggy, I guess, feeling trapped and empty by his image and how it's affected him personally. And it's a really beautiful moment on this album, expressing these feelings that Peggy, you know, has about, you know, his self-image and what he's become. Some of the singing on this track is just so potent and feels like some, some serious just soul music. He, he really pours his heart out on this track and it's a big surprise. Near the end of this album we got the D, uh, Dots Freestyle Remix. This is the remixed version of what Peggy did with Kenny Beats, uh, The Police. And I guess he was so proud of what he did that he decided to put this version on the album as well. And I can't help but feel like in a sense it feels a little bit lazy. Uh, but at the same time, Allow me to compare this sort of moment to say the moment of uh, Machine Gun Kelly on Rap Devil using that out of place garbage again on his app. Copy and pasting into a separate song. Uh, Alright, first of all, let's start off by saying with the obvious, you know, uh, it was never officially released. Yeah, this, this freestyle was never officially released. Okay, he's a little bit in the green now. Uh, this is him releasing his song as its own thing. In a lot of ways, it's him time stamping this moment that, you know, he was doing this freestyle and he was probably pretty proud of it and he wanted to use it and share it to an audience that maybe didn't see it in the first place. I actually enjoyed it better than the original, uh, which was made really quickly. And I love how he made this song his own with this beautiful chorus and he really just elevates it to this next level to where it feels like it fits the album, like it just sort of portrays him in the moment. Poppy I Missed You, definitely the instrumental here is like top three for the album. The bass hits are absolutely beautiful. But first I'm gonna say that I saw the Swans reference here and yeah, it almost made me cream. Uh, the Seer, Swans, God damn, I love that album. For one, it was just an amazing closer in terms of aesthetic and sound. And it just lyrically put a tight little bow on this whole experience. And it is Peggy getting violent and braggadocious for the first half. But then I feel like this second half, it just creates this beautiful ending and soundscape that, you know what, actually kind of reminds me a lot of this Seer, which to be honest, is like one of the coolest connections I could pull from this track. Cause it really felt like he just took inspiration from that and then like had an Easter egg here in this track because man, it sounds like exactly like it would be something off the end of the Seer. So yeah, wow. And that's, that's the end of this entire album, so yeah. The effect that I pulled so much out of this, man, I enjoyed the hell out of this. And if I was to criticize, of course, one thing, it would be the fact that this album blends together maybe a little too well. Many of the songs here just don't feel complete in the slightest. And it makes most of these songs insanely forgettable, unlike Veteran, where I felt like every individual song I could remember, I could pull something from. But here it feels like everything blended and it made for a more cohesive experience front to back where I understood Peggy a lot better and in a lot of ways there's some positives to pull out of that but I do wish that it, it stuck in my head a little bit more because I did forget all about a lot of these tracks. It may also make it very difficult to remember this album in say like four months or so. At the same time I feel like there's a lot to unpack here still and I can see myself coming back to this album to see what else I can unpack that Peggy's got to offer. Really creative album, lots of fun, and a pleasant surprise. I give this album strong eight. Alright, alright, it's time for the second last part of this review, where I attempt to create my own JPEG Mafia song. Alright, so I actually already made this song, so uh, let me explain a bit. I took the JPEG Mafia type beat song and sampled it for my own JPEG Mafia type song. And here we go. Yeah. <laughs> I keep the guts in my house. I keep a stick in my basement. Talking that shit on the neck that you cut in a whip. Thinking head need a rep. Go off some smoke in a blog. Know that you are not denied. Peggy the brand new cop. This shit's 
Under my sheets, they ain't talking so much shit. I don't know where I'm going, but I don't know where I find it. So <laughs> they ain't said shit about hey. dickens. I don't know. the police if you like the video make sure you subscribe and make sure you hit notifications and let me know what you want to hear next update and I hopefully will do a live stream soon so that I can make money because that's my only source of income so hopefully hope you guys tune into that because uh, I got a lot of microwave pizzas to, to cook and eat because I'm starving uh, bye